All right, we're now joined by Masi Zolom Kassela, as I stated earlier, as a former DA member and speaker of the Western Cape Legislature. He's now also president of the newly launched political party. Mr. Kassela, good evening and thank you very much for your time. Firstly, congratulations on the launch of your party. Thank you very much, Mfundo. Uh, I, I am I'm very excited. You know, it's been such a great day when I got a call to come to this session this evening. We are still celebrating, you know, so it's, it's quite a very special moment. Thank you very much for congratulating us. All right. Now, you launched your party in Mitchell's Plain. Is there any significance in the choice of this particular location? You, you know, when you look at Rockland's uh, Civic Center, um, in 1983, 40 years ago, on the 20th of August, uh, men and women, young and old, black and white, colored Indian and Asian, met and convened in a very emotive and, and highly sensitive period in our history where it was a heightened um, aggression by the minority government that only pursued interest of white people in South Africa and ignored the interest of the majority of South Africans. And we, we then, in pursuit of the agenda that those men and women of the 1983 uh, season of hope, led by leaders who believed in social justice, faith-based leaders, civil society organizations, a political activists and South Africans who love this country. We, we wanted to ensure that that spirit does not die, but we continue to ride on the wave of hope in the season of a new South Africa that they yearned for, which many post-94 are still waiting for that South Africa to arrive in their doorstep. And we're saying that we will not rest, and certainly we will never die without having pursued this agenda of equality, the agenda of access to opportunities, and of course, uh, in, a, in, a, in, in achieving the kind of values that we sought to see in this South Africa so that we're able to live a South Africa that is much better than the one we found. And it could never be any other ve venue besides this particular venue. But of course, you will remember, um, Pundo, that in 2020, when I had a year in Parliament as the Speaker, I took Parliament to this venue. And the, pre the reason for that was to bring Parliament closer, closer to the people. And I thought there's nothing more significant than continued on that trajectory uh, in order to ensure that we bring people closer to ACC because the ACC the Alliance of Citizens for Change is an organization that, peop that put people first. It's an agenda of ordinary South Africans, mainly mm -hmm. poor, marginalized and, and downtrodden, who do not believe that this country works for them. And they are saying that they need change, and that change, they need it now, and it must be based on the values of transparency, equality, but it must be on ethical values, accountability, fairness, integrity, and so forth and so on. So inclusivity being key among all of those. Mm -hmm. And you will see the attendance there. The attendance was very diverse, meaning it is an organization that truly believes and acts out the principle and the value of inclusivity, that South Africans must work together and there's nothing that truly defines that than the UDF of 1983 at this venue, which we now symbolically utilized to do exactly what South Africans wanted to unite everybody around a common agenda, a purpose of unity, was everybody is dividing South Africans. We are saying we will unite all the people of this country around a common agenda of social justice to bring about equality 
and justice in our mm-hmm. lifetime. I take it these are your seven core values. But to be quite honest, some of what the party offers is all too familiar. What actually distinguishes the Alliance of Citizens for Change from the multitude of parties in the country right now? You see, Fundo, I raised it as well uh, earlier. Um, political parties talk. And that's what makes it difficult for South Africans to, to find um, it attractive to go and participate in elections. So what is different about us, we don't just talk. We will not just talk. We are going to implement. Of course, in the policy direction, we are then able to articulate policy priorities that which I've shared during the launch. That which we are saying, for instance, we need a credit to grave policy orientation in terms of education. That there should not be a reason why a child of a a wealthy man who lives in Constantia in, in the Western Cape, or a child of a wealthy man who lives in Sanctuary, cannot enjoy the same education as a child of a young of a parent that lives in Alexandra or who lives in Mitchell's Plain or Kailija. Mm-hmm. And those are kind of the values that we want to drive. In 2023 in South Africa, it should not be the case in Bundo, that people are going to struggle to break the cycle of poverty that will, in, is in essence, create an opportunity for a South Africa that is better than the one we found. And the ACC says we will introduce an education policy that will drive an education agenda that is driven by social justice, that is equity, bringing South Africans closer, irrespective of the quality, irrespective of, irrespective of the social uh, circumstances or when you talk about the accident of your birth you should not be condemned to poverty because you were born by parents that are poor mm-hmm. and that's perhaps the to bring it closer and to home apologies for policy. interjecting there we need a policy. Mm-hmm. i just want to bring it closer to home is there a distinction between you and your erstwhile party the democratic alliance because i'm sure a lot of people would be interested to know where you stand on policy here particularly affirmative action uh, as opposed to the da where exactly do you stand are you a splinter of the democratic alliance in any way <laughs> i expected this question Nathan. if you didn't ask it i was going to say no 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 I want to hear this. Um, the, the, the DA in us, it's like oil and water. You know, it's, it's like oil and water. We will never be the same. We are not mm-hmm. the same. In fact, even the people that are joining ACC are people that would never otherwise have voted for the DA. And otherwise, some of them are individuals who uh, somewhat have been part of that organization and felt it has not represented them because there's been this essence of denialism by the uh, individuals and somewhat the leadership collective in the DA, where they believe that South Africa, we just landed here from moon, or we landed from planet Mars, that there was never inequality in this country, there was never colonialism, there was never apartheid, we just landed were the same, were equal. We must accept that South Africa is one of the most unequal societies, and therefore, We've got to do something urgent and something much more different in order to bring South Africans together, rich, young and old, poor, and, and, and of course, urban and rural. And that is what we need to achieve. But you can't achieve that by being a denialist. So we need to tweak the policy narrative of South Africa and ensure that there's a strong social conscience in doing that. And you will achieve the kind of social justice that we seek to address, and that simply put, is equitable uh, policy narrative. Um, and, and that equity, rather, that you will be able to achieve is to understand that the school in Milchard's Plain has not, this, does not have the same resources as the school in Tableview, and the school in Kailisha does not have the same school in Somerset West in the CBD. So one of the things that makes any organization like the one that you have mentioned is when they deny that South Africa is unequal and we need to do something urgently 
to ensure that we deal with the historic imbalances of South Africa. Mm -hmm. In 2012, when I was in the DA, I made a call with some of the leaders that some of them are gone as well. They're no longer there. Mm -hmm. For a policy conference which was ultimately agreed upon after the um, Federal Congress where I participated as a, as a chairperson candidate at the time. And we agreed at that conference that we need to have a strong social conscience and we need to ensure that the policies of affirmative action are not seen as the negative um, con with, with a negative connotation. All right. Especially when you seek to bridge the gap between the poor and the rich. But the manner to do that must not be disruptive in the economy. It must not be discrimin discriminatory in such a way that others feel that they do not belong in this country. We are talking about inclusivity and we mean a South Africa where everybody can truly say we belong here. Mm -hmm. We must not use uh, equity. We must never use social justice and equitable um, management of state resources because you are managing them. You are saying that Mpundo lives uh, in, man, in, a, in an affluent area in in you know in 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 in, in, summer strand in, in you know in PE. Then let me give Mpundo less in terms of the. Uh, education allocations in terms of that particular school, which is the same thing that you then do for mother when you say I must give them more because they need more to get to the kind of level of the education quality that we need. But if you don't understand that, that there's people who are poor and there are those who are rich, then you live in another planet. You mm -hmm. don't live here. Okay. And South Africans must punish those political parties they must not vote for them. All right. And now that's your why the alliance party, of citizens is mm -hmm. that opportunity. Now, your political party enters the space at a time when the conversation around a moonshot pact is gaining momentum. So coalitions are all the talk. What are your views then on that convention? Because you seem to say that you are oil and water when it comes to the Democratic Alliance. Would you be somebody that is willing to work with them should the opportunity arise? We will approach this differently. We, we will never enter into a relationship on the basis of positions uh, for the leadership. Because leaders in these moonshots and sunshots and all of these mass short, short and whatever shots you call them, it appears that this is a jostling for positions for leaders because some of them want to taste how it is to govern. And, and we can't do this at the expense of the majority of the people of this country the poor and downtrodden, whom we need to consult and engage. So the ACC, we have just arrived now today, and we're going to engage as the leadership and say which approach will work. Because one of the policies that we put together uh, as part of the policy directive that we need to approach is that we need a, a share, a, a, you know, what we call a sharing of power. And the power sharing arrangement is that you should not depend on having these pacts that people are talking about. There must be a le there must be a legislation, uh, Fundo. That legislation must say to us: when you get two percent or five percent of the of, of the electoral vote, you must then be able to participate in some kind of government without you having to go and say, "Please work with me. Please work with me." Even well, the DA was proposing something like that. that this, uh, the DA was proposing something like but that then? in their coalition agreements. They were proposing something like that. It's still on the table. They have a five-point plan for coalitions, or at least to solidify them or make them more permanent. So it's somewhat similar, I suppose, to what you're no. saying? They, that, that approach would have worked. They've been in parliament since 1994. Why are they proposing it now? And that even, even that particular approach is not the one that says... The, there must be a power, share, power sharing agreement. It says you must negotiate coalitions. And then those coalitions, after being negotiated, then you can only change them somewhat at a particular time. We are saying that if you get 20 votes Vundo, in a particular community, and, and therefore the qualification is that you must get, uh, you know, 15 votes, that means you are part of government. You don't have to be negotiating that outcome as they do in the upper Austrian environment. In, the, in, in Austria, they're doing it very well. And Rwanda has started to do the same thing. 
in Africa here. So we must be able to say that, uh, no, they do it also in the Eche Queen municipality here in South Africa, where a party that gets a particular threshold is automatically part of government. You don't need to negotiate what is best for citizens. Citizens know what is best for them because they vote for parties. That way of voting must translate into government, not for us to, sometimes we have a situation as you've seen in Johannesburg, where a mayor could simply come from a party of 0.01%. Mm -hmm. yes. And that is dangerous. And you ask, why a protest that are so violent in communities? Mm -hmm. Why is it so? And you end up having MPs or councillors Mr. Kassela, sending unfortunately, police we've run out communities when there's problems. There. Apologies there. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. But again, congratulations on your party. And I'm sure you do know that the hard work begins now because 2024 is around the corner. Thank you yet again for your time. That was former DA member and speaker of the Western Cape Legislature and now founder of ACC or rather president, Masizola Mkasela.